Hello, Jason Evigan. You are back. Last minute. This is a, I've never done a podcast within 20 minutes of asking to be on it. That was pretty. Well, you know. Well, you like, well, actually, you hit me this morning at 10 a.m., but I was sleeping. So, but. I can't, I can't sleep that late. I know, but you, you also probably weren't up till five making music, so. Oh, what were you doing at five? Just, uh, I was finishing this Charlotte Lawrence song and working on some Stephen Puth stuff. I just, you know, I, I'm a late night guy. Are you, um, you find that this time is allowing you to just finish stuff and focus? Yeah, it's wild. It, it, the cool thing about it is because for like the past eight years, I've just lived and died by my calendar. When you, like, like even when someone's like, hey, you want to get together? I like have an anxiety attack. I'm like, uh, hit Nicole. She, you know, she'll, she'll schedule us in. So now it's like, I have nothing on the calendar. So I'm literally going in and making music like I used to when I want it. I'm just like, oh, I feel inspired. I'm going to go work on something. Or So it's been like a crazy inspiring time for me, actually. Um, so since the last time you were on this. Things have changed for Anne the Writer is. What was that? Things have really changed for Anne the Writer is. Yeah, man. It's crazy. I mean, kind of look, there's, it's been probably three, four years since you did your interview. Okay. Maybe longer. Yeah, sure. But whatever it is, long enough that it's like, it's kind of bananas, man. You like... You know, you've had you you had like a a couple of just massive songs in the last couple of years. Yeah. And yet you're still taking time to be creative and still be a human. I feel like of all the people that I've ever interviewed, I don't know if there's anybody else who compartmentalizes or cherishes their non-music time as much as you do. Oh wow! Not because you do all the traveling and all the other stuff, how mm. how does having you know girls like you and you know like how does having these kinds of huge records, you know, how do you deal with the mental game of big songs coming back, hitting hard? You know, you're back in like the number one spot and like broke breaking records kind of hit. And then also trying to be a, uh, a human in touch with the planet and uh, a higher purpose and spirituality. How do you deal with all of this mental game? I, I feel like you seem to always have things figured out. And it just seems that there's so much, so much has happened for you since we talked to you last. Yeah. Well, that's a terrible question. Yeah. No, it's so a great question, question, actually. It's a great, it's a great question. No, it's a really... how you deal with life, with this kind of spiritual success and... Well, here, here's, for me, it's actually really interesting because right before Girls Like You and What Lovers Do and that, that little section of like, you know, like time when like a bunch of songs came out that were really successful, like a couple months before that, I was kind of coming to the term. I was like, you know what? All right. All my songs I'm getting, they're kind of like, album, you know, just album songs. And I'm not really having any hits right now. It was maybe a year or two that I didn't have any songs on the radio or that were doing well. And I kind of just came to the terms with, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to, all right, I'm okay with just being like, I'm not, I'm not going to make hits anymore. It's fine. I don't, I don't have it. I don't have what it takes, I guess. I really thought that. And I kind of actually, no joke, kind of, came to the terms of that and right when I came to the terms of that I got in this super creative zone because I stopped caring about like trying to make the hit and I just went deep into like just making music for fun and realizing cool I, I, I can make a living off just productions and that kind of stuff and right when that happened was when those songs like the, the songs happened and I made those songs and they they happened and then and then since then, it's, you know, I, I'm, I'm almost feeling like I'm back in that same place right now. You know, I have a song. Really? That, yeah, it's like interesting. You have this, this physical song on the Dua Lipa, 
like they just said they're not going to U.S. radio with it. So I'm in the same kind of thing. And then why, why didn't yeah, you go to U.S. radio with it? It was all uh, don't start now. They didn't think it was was doing as well, so they put out physical. And then out of nowhere, don't start now went to number one for like months, you know. So it stayed there. It's all good. It's just the way it works. But it's crazy when it comes to the spiritual stuff. I just realized that I don't function like there's months where I go out, like uh, there's months where I go away. I'm just like, or I should go away from my spirituality. I'm just kind of so into the the game and the work and the whole thing. And I just don't function. right. My marriage falls apart. I fall apart. I'm not as good as a friend of my, my friends, my family. And I just realized like I've tried, I know what happens when I'm not connected to to the source, to the, to the creator, I, I realize my, my life just doesn't function well. So, you know, there's definitely times when I'm, when I'm not and I just see it. So it's like, I, I, I have to put that as just as important as my, as my work or I just don't, I'm not really functioning at my highest self, you know, if that makes One sense. One of the things that, that's happened also is elephant heart. Yeah. It oh, didn't yeah. Even exist then. It didn't exist then. Thought. And here you're trying, you know, the idea of of when you feel connected and also being a good husband and all that stuff. What's it like to be in a band, a partnership with your spouse, creative yeah. speaking? How do you deal with all, all? Like that's fascinating to me. I mean, that's a that's a new level of relationship. Yeah. Well, the cool thing is Victoria's never been like, she's never wanted to be famous. She's never wanted to make music for a living. She never, that was never a part of her like makeup. You know what I mean? She was never like, so I definitely don't have to deal with that. Cause I know, I know a lot of times when, you know, producers and they have a wife or a girlfriend who has music, it's a lot of that kind of like resentment. Like you're working too much. Like we should be you know, like, you know, there's none of that. Her intention with Elephant Heart was strictly to put out music to help people and to and to unite people. And so the the intention with Elephant Heart is very pure. So even when the you know our marketing people are like, we need more content, more of this, it just doesn't we really have to keep it organic or it doesn't work, you know. And it's been I mean, speaking of marketing, the fact that you guys do it for fun and then it becomes I know. The damn AirPod commercials. <laughs> what the hell is that, yeah. man? But that that's that's like the the licensing dream, yeah. you know, spot. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it's it's wow. It, it just kind of has been taken off. It's it's working, you know. But what uh, guys, what do you guys want from it? What do you like being back in a band? Do you want to perf- Do you want to go on tour? If the right tour is there, yeah, like we're we, we're doing like Lollapalooza. We had Lightning in a Bottle book. We have, and we've played some shows, and it's crazy. The cool thing is that when I was in a band, it, it was like it was more kind of like oh, like me on stage and like I'm this thing. And now it's this, it's really cool. Like there is like this uniting thing with our music and what and what we see at shows, and it's so it, it just feels like it's less about us and it's really about the music and it's really about community so it's refreshing what's it like to release music in the middle of a quarantine (laughs) i know right uh it feels kind of the same because releasing music now is a weird thing you're like oh it's out not like copy and this thing this this, you know piece of which we are going to make some vinyl i think but it definitely uh, it's a little anticlimactic, um, especially when the album's been we've already the album's been done for like a year or two, um, and then. But we also we actually we're making a quarantine EP right now, which is kind of cool. It's 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 like these six minute long like ambient, just flowy, relaxing like recording, just picks like sounds and little clicks and all sorts of stuff. So really inspiring. How do you make music for? Um, Charlotte Lawrence and Stephen Puth and for Elephant Heart. How do you do that? Like, how do you how do you jump from one to the next? And then, 
who is the the time in the day to do that yeah i don't know how i do that i feel like are you fast am i fast yeah so people say i'm fast i i don't feel like i'm fast because i don't i feel like i don't know what i'm doing so i feel like i'm always just trying to figure it out as i get on there but um yeah the, the elephant art stuff it just it literally when we feel it and we're inspired we do it the other stuff is kind of like you have to get in the studio and start you have to kind of let the inspiration come you like start working you're like oh, okay then you crack the code you know like i was trying to crack the code in that short sort of women's song for like a few days and i couldn't and then i finally cracked the code um is it good yeah i think it's really good yeah it was andrew watt and ali and uh sure hold on go back it it, 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 for some reason it it got jumbly I, when yeah. I, it, it was, yeah, it's an Andrew it's like, Alley and Charlotte song, and then I and I uh, they asked me to produce it, so it was cool. Oh, amazing! Yeah. Do you like producing finished songs as much as you like writing them? I didn't for a long time, but I've started to like. I did one on Selena's album, and I'm starting to really like it. I didn't like it before because I because I, I'm kind of, like as you know, I I kind of like finish the production the day of, I kind of like get in a zone. And then when I try to come back, I'm like, oh, it's, it's kind of hard for me. But I think I've worked past that, you know. What's next for you? What's next for me? Um, I don't know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm signing, you know, like Gian's doing really well. So it's, I have my, my, my first producer who's like, it's actually really happening. So that's a good feeling, a feeling of accomplishment. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, Gian uh, was like basically my engineer, right hand guy, assistant, took care of and like everything. He kept basically lived here. And in the past, you know, and then he, he got on Girls Like You, which was really cool. He actually, so he, so he started, he would do all like my vocal tuning for me and he'd come to sessions with me all the time. And we were in the room with SZA, doing the what lovers do <clears throat> and he was running the board or running the running the board you know running yeah. the computer and jay cash was there everything and so SZA starts we have this we're having a great time hanging out SZA gets in the booth and then uh i start giving notes as she's recording and she's like oh goes, oh could you and cash actually leave i just want to work with the engineer i was like gian's never done vocals alone without this is I was like, okay, so I left. I was like, God, I hope this works out. And he killed it. So then, so then on Girls Like You, I was out of town and Adam hit me and he was like, hey, I wanna re, uh, redo the bridge. And I'm like, I'm out of town, I can't do it. He goes, oh, well, I have to, have to get it done. So I told Gian, just go in and record him. And then Gian ended up writing the melody of the bridge with him in the room. So that's how he got in there, it was kind of a, and from that, he's just been he's been killing as a vocal producer. He's been doing that, and then got the Jonas Brothers song, and now he's got I don't know if I'm allowed to say, but he has a bunch of other really cool cuts coming out there. So it's it's all happening. And our right and, and your writers are working with him, and yeah, our it. kids are playing. You know, it's like our our children and uh, nephews and nieces are all are all going to school together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, How, what were you gonna say? How's this, how's it been for you the quarantine? What's as a writer? Um, you know, it's a, it's the the there's. A, I mean, no matter what, having this conversation means that right now both of us are healthy and our families are healthy enough that we're not. Yeah. In a hospital or n near a hospital, so knock on wood that um, we're fortunate. Uh, that, that's kind of the first thing. And then, but that, that said, I feel like I'm taking time to also not do anything. I feel mm -hmm. like I'm really busy all the time and always filling up space with work. Mm -hmm. And right now, um, I've made some choices where I'm actually just reading a book Wow. Or I, I, you know, I don't know. I, I find I find it sometimes a little hard to be creative in, in this environment as well. It's like mm -hmm. half you can really go all in 
you know, but have you found it hard at all? Do you follow the news at all or, or do you block out what's happening outside of the house? No, I, I do my news check-in like once a day for about half hour. I get enough news sent to me every day, you know, I, and you know, the news is insane. It's obviously, it's, it's so like, you know, you get the Democrat news, the Republican news, and it's just, it's, I, I don't know. The news to me definitely is very distracting and I feel like it really is, you know, if I watched Fox News in the beginning, you, you like you, you know what I'm saying? Like they were literally saying, "Oh, it's fine, it's all good," and all these old people died because of that. You know, they're you know. So I don't know. News is not, not my thing. I definitely do keep up and check what's happening, but I also feel like I was saying this a couple months ago. I was like, I was like, and I was like, this this sounds kind of morbid, but I feel like something big has to happen, like some kind of pandemic has to happen in the world because especially in our country because we're a new country we we have really experienced real like real hardship and i feel like we're kind of living in this la la land world a little bit and uh, i just felt like something something big has to happen that's gonna first of all the whole world it's crazy we're all sort of are you frozen? Or are you just yeah, it down? just yeah. it just froze for a second right when you were saying it. The world. Why don't I call you right back and let's continue on? Is that okay? Yeah, totally. I'm gonna send you a new link and then let's just let's just restart that. Okay, cool. So don't forget where you were. Hi. Wow. So we're gonna start this next uh, going back to it, um, but this time we have uh, Peter Pugman joining us. I might have a Spurs joining me too. She's a, she's, she's a, not yet. Um, um, yeah. So yeah, you were saying that like that, you know, a couple of months ago you were feeling. Yeah. I was like, I, I just feel like everything's moving so fast, right? The whole world, everything's just going and going and going and going. When it comes, even, even when, the, when it comes to climate and everything, the economy, um, ind individualism, everything, it's, I felt like it was just, coming to a place that it, something like this almost needed to happen like a reset and i've been saying i feel like this the world needs a little reset you know so um while wow, the pug is staring me in the eyes yeah he's focused he's focused so you know as devastating as it is because i know there's so many people suffering because of it i i feel like when it's over that there is going to be a lot of beauty that comes from it i think so too i mean the you and I both put out projects before you had to obsessively be on your phones, even when you were doing MySpace. Yeah, it wasn't the phone. It wasn't the phone. You still had to go to your computer, so you were obsessed with your computer. But once you left the computer, it wasn't associated with your BlackBerry. So you had exactly. your phone sort of like your communication device which is not the same thing as also your marketing promo and everything else and there's you know trying to get the word out and also trying to take in information at the same time seems impossible it is i actually just went i went to this thing called onsite in nashville uh a couple months ago i was feeling i was like man i feel like i'm about to burn out i just feel like i'm just going too hard and you know and i was thinking about i went from a one bedroom apartment in venice just me and victoria two sessions everything it was like it was still crazy because i was working all the time to going to having you know houses having six people on staff you know in all this insanity and then on top of it i'm being bombarded with information on my phone all day long so at the end of the day, I literally, my bandwidth, I had no capacity for even when a friend's like, hey, can I send you a song? Like a good friend, hey, can I send you a song I worked on? I, I, like, I, will, I freak out because I don't have, you know, our brains aren't actually why we're, we're human beings, not human doers. We're not supposed to be doing so much all the time. Our brains can't take it all in, you know? So I think this time is, it, it, it's going to be good, I think, for people to 
like you said, him reading a book or, you know, I'm out, I've been out in the garden just chilling. It's like, it was great. Like yeah, we, no one, as much as artists are expecting things, for you, it's good you can finish things. Yeah. Started. But the idea that you really can't start a ton of new things from scratch right now, and we don't even know if any artists and not that many artists are going to be able to record vocals on new material. Mm. You know, I think. So I think it's going to be a really interesting time to, especially for the music industry to, to slow down. Yeah. I, I can't imagine that's going to hurt the art of it all. You know, you think it's, it's going to hurt the art? No, I think it's going to help the. I can't gonna imagine it, it hurting. There's going to be better music coming out. There's going to be people are going to take time, like, like, even on the Stephen Pooh stuff. I went in and I was like, I felt like there was not as much pressure, so I went in and I was making. I, I was recording crazy instruments I've never recorded before and doing all this stuff that I haven't done before because I didn't have as much pressure on. I was like trying to make real art, you know, not like a factory. So it's opening the door for my dog, uh, as you can see. But um, did you see what I did the other day online? I did I, I I did an Instagram live, and I started making a track. And I said, okay, so <clears throat> send me stems. Like this one kid sent a crazy bass line, so he sent it him. I started working with that, and then I gave I, I made up an email, and everyone started sending in stems. So I was just taking their stems and putting it in. I made I made a song with like thirty people, and it turned out really what? cool. Yeah. It was really cool. And like this so can, where can people hear that? Um there's a link. I have a link. It's send Evigan Stems. I think let me see what the SoundCloud is. Oh. Uh it's not finished yet. It's up like I left it up for people to write over, you know. Um it was a uh, here, send who's whose idea was it? It was I oh I send Evigan Stems. Yeah, it's just Send Evigan Stems. Oh, Send Evigan Stems. Yeah, you hear the track. It's pretty cool. I, I just had the idea one morning. I woke up, I was like, that'd be, that'd be sick to do that. And then it's like, what if, you know, put an album out like that and put, you give the proceeds to like the, the people in the music industry who are hurting right now, you know, or something like that. I don't when know. you're as prolific as you are, do you get inspiration from other music or do you get inspiration from movies, books, art? Do you, do you get it from being outside and gardening? Do you, you know, where do you get your inspiration from? I, I know some of this answer and I know we've discussed some of it, but I'm just curious. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I'm, when I'm like really working a lot and I feel burnt out, I, I do get inspiration from like documentaries. I watched that Love and Mercy, the, the, uh, the Beach Boys one. And I got like, just so inspired by that one. Yeah. And I, I went on a rampage after that and made a ton of music that was like pet sounds sort of stuff. And uh, some movies, definitely stillness, just like being still and letting ideas come, like walks, taking walks. It's crazy how, how just a walk can inspire so much. There was, um, you know, in the 19th century when poets and authors, it was almost unanimously men at that point. And a professional writer was expected to take these long all day walks and prof not music writers, authors and whatnot. Yeah. You know, they were notoriously walking around the towns. Wow. The writers are not people who sit at home writing. Yeah. You know, well, Einstein they think a lot of it. From walking. Einstein thought of this, I think it's the theory, theory of relativity on a, on a walk on the beach. Yeah. So he, he would literally schedule in, a, it was a part of his job was to take walks on the beach. Huh. You know, like, I mean, McCart yesterday came to Paul McCartney in a dream. So I feel like striving isn't always where the best stuff comes from. It's like letting it come to you, you know, like. How are your llamas? They're alpacas. How are your alpacas, and uh, why are they so offended when people call them llamas? Llamas are more aggressive. Llamas spit on humans. Alpacas are smaller, and they only spit on each other. 
and their fleece is way nicer than mama's. That's very funny. Do you let them in the house? No. Nah. We have a next door. We have like a farm over there, so they they uh, they just run through the garden and eat the grass and make great fertilizer and compost. Are you growing a lot of your food? Yeah, we just got we just got chickens too. So we have thirty fruit trees. We have artichokes, peaches, all, everything like tons of lemongrass, like all sorts of stuff. The Evigans doing what Evigans do. It's Chumba Farms. It's just Chumba Farms, man. Wait, so um, with Elephant Heart, not to go back to that real quick, but do you want to eventually go to radio and do and move it in that direction? I mean, it's not, it, it seems musically like you can do so much with that music, but it doesn't seem like you're trying to do what you just did with the no. art you're talking about you know you're not a, you're not it doesn't seem like you're aiming for no we're aiming like our we're more like in the festival world like lighting a bottle electric forest the kind of transformational festival scene uh froze again okay so yeah so we were talking about you doing the festival circuit yeah and elephant arts it's, it's it, it's not like we're not aiming for radio, but if it happens, it happens. I know college radios picked it up and stuff like that and some KCRW and that kind of stuff, but we're not like aiming for that, you know? Yeah. If it happens, it happens. It'd be great. But we really, we want elephant art to reach as many people as possible because, you know, like the intention, of, it's crazy. Like making music with Victoria too, it's been so different is, like, well, like pray before we make the music and like we'll set an intention of what we want the song to do to people and how we want it to heal. And, you know, there's such a, and, and like bring people closer to like their creator. And so there's so much more, in, there's so much intention with it. So that, if, so if it reaches masses, then it's beautiful. That's, that's. How do you, um, I have this vision of how you guys are writing these songs, but you guys are not sitting at a guitar writing these songs. So is it that, you know, I know some of the samples are stuff you recorded while you've been, you know, around mm -hmm. indigenous people, wherever you are in the world. Yeah. But how do you, is that just Victoria singing in a booth? Just being Victoria? Is that you saying, just, oh, I got this idea. Ah! Oh, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's cool. We have that, that microphone you have right there. You have the SM7. You go in the studio, like uh, like for instance, our song When You Say Go, she just went on the Mellotron. Dun, 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 dun. I was like, oh, and I start, I got the mic, I start singing a melody, and then she's like, oh, let's add this. And it's just, it's so free and just happens. And we just, we record as we go. And the song kind of forms itself. And then, uh, but yeah, it's it's both. It's both our melodies and both our production. A lot of sometimes she'll just come up with like a track in her little studio and bring it to me, and I'm like, oh, this is great. Let's do this. And so it's pretty what, fun. What's a good chain for an SM7? I have an SM7. I actually have nice mics, but I keep an SM7 right here because it's so easy. And I have a chain over here, and I kind of I still don't know how to do a vocal chain. What's a good vocal chain? I I run the SM7 through a Chandler and a Distressor. Uh huh. And then. Oh, I just, the Distressor? Yeah. And I just throw on. Uh, I mean, SM7 is kind of sound good through anything, but then I, just, I just put the CLA vocals on there. It's quick. It's and fast. that's it? Yeah. Is that, is, is that what's making albums? Yeah. <laughs> no way. Yeah. And then, you, and then, of course, you know, you, you get your mixers to whatever they do. They probably just take what you have and make it sound better. So funny. So that's how it's done. Do you so, really think, like, you know, you were saying, I, I feel like we started at one point, went to one point, went to another, then are working our way back. Yeah. You were saying how right before, you know, you got into, um, you know, the girls like you phase of things, mm -hmm. that you were questioning if what you have is really, you know, then maybe you're an album track guy now. Yeah. I mean, and this this industry has a way of playing that game with you. 
you know um yeah you're like why didn't i get the call to do that album like my friends did or why didn't i am i not cool enough or my see you, you know you have all this self-doubt is it, is it fomo do you do you look at people online and get fomo no i, I don't actually there's it's more like uh no it's not it's not fomo for me it's more like uh comparing myself to myself i'm like oh man can i can i ever do that again or oh uh, maybe i'm getting older now maybe they don't want me around or but it's not like it's not like fomo it's a it's a weird thing so we've been yeah. doing yeah. we've been doing all these interviews with you know hall of famers these guys who are 80 years old you know paul anka's of the world mm -hmm. and here the guy does you know put your head on my shoulders when he's 15 or 16 you know wow. he does my way that's you know 15 years later does my way and it's like another nine years later is the next song you know i know for this season we have glenn ballard and he has these like very strange wow. periods of smash 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 it's just not happening for him it's not happening for for like five years and then all of a sudden alanis morissette and you know having mm. a jagged little pill you know it's like the idea of what's so interesting is what happens in those periods where the hits aren't happening because you know the late Allie Willis, when we interviewed her, she was saying, you know, that's, that's when all the hit songs are being written. Mm, yeah. You hear, yeah. by the time you hear them, you're not writing hit songs anymore. And you're probably, you know, if, if you have even the luxury of a, of a spurt of two or three hits in a row, then, you know, that's a really hard time to be creative it's hard to be creative when you have hit after hit after hit. It is, especially when, you know, everyone's like, Hey, we want girls like you. Can you do that? And they like, no, I can't redo that song. I didn't even think that song was gonna be a hit. I don't even know. It was like, it was the simplest. We wrote that song in 45 minutes. And every time I try to redo it, it sounds like crap. It sounds like a cheesy ass pop song. Like, so that was, it was some, you know, that happened with chains a lot too. And I did chains. It was like every time, every session people are like we want that chains thing it, it always happens every time you have a hit song people want that again you try to recreate you can't and then the, then you then i always find myself in this weird slum because i'm just trying to re you know are you frozen no okay I'm, you're just like i was really i was, <laughs> I was yeah just, yeah so, so you find you find yourself in this slum you because think. you're not you know like like i i don't know i, I I always say, don't try to inspire, just try to stay inspired. Because every time you try to like, you're like striving, you're striving to do something. For me, I don't work that well. I just have to stay inspired and let the stuff come in. And I you know, you, that was like the last song on the Maroon 5 album that, that they cut. And I really did not, I was almost gonna, I don't know if I told you this, I, I was actually gonna call, because they, they, so they had like, three hits in a row and they're like, we're putting girls like you out next. And I was like, dude, and I was almost gonna call their team and be like, I don't know if it's a hit, dude. I feel like it's like too boring. And I just don't, I feel like there's probably other song. I didn't do it. I didn't call them luckily. And like the next day Cash was like, yo, we got, you know, like all these actors in the video and Cardi B's jumping on. I was like, okay. And then this is crazy. You just never know what the stuff, you know? So incredible. Well, um, it's good to get an update from you and uh you know i'm excited to see the next phases of all this stuff but i'm also a fan of elephant heart so it's fun to catch up i'm glad he sent me the album two days ago to to check out and oh, dude. It's available everywhere so called seasons yeah the artwork's cool we found that when i was traveling through peru i literally in this little store i found this like photograph of this gem and I reached out to the, the, the photographer and he let us license it for the album. So it's like such a cool, that's no Photoshop or anything. It's just like a picture with some cool lighting on it. So.
I mean, who else says I was in this, saw this store in Peru and that, you know, it's, it's just so damn on brand, man. I don't know how you like, it's nice when people are just themselves over and over and over again, whatever, you know what I mean? You know, and, and, and part of that, You're the same way. Yeah, but part of what makes, what makes you use it, even though you're constantly reinventing yourself in the Jason Evigan way. Do you know what I mean? So there's, there's like a freshness every time. It's like, oh, I got this. I got a new thing coming. To whatever, you know, whatever. Thank I, you. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate it. Alpacas is, is everything. You know, it's, that's, that's Peru, right Peru inspired friend. the alpacas. Peru okay. inspired the Peru inspired the alpacas. Of course they did. Yeah. Of course they did. Well, uh, you're the alpaca king. Yeah, the alpacas, you know, I got my back to a blog. I'm trying to work, get off the ground, but it's not happening. You know? Well, um, <laughs> let's, let's hang out when we are, uh, um, when we're not stuck in our homes. Do you want to try to do a little Zoom songwriting session? I haven't tried it yet, but I'm down. I would do it with someone I know I, know I can, like, you know, fall on my face in front of. Yeah, we should definitely. I, I've, I've done, I just did with Charlie and Cash, and it's, it's fun. It's actually kind of good because it, it's a little, like, less pressure, too. All right, yeah. let's give it a shot. All right. Down. We'll cool. start Friday. I feel like I'm hanging out with you right now. Like I don't feel like I'm in a computer. Yeah, that's also true. I mean, the, the socializing is actually kind of enjoyable. Yeah. You know, and you end up being really focused because you can't be on your phone. You can't be distracted by somebody walk. Well, you can't have somebody walking out of your space. But, you know, and yeah. that, like it's actually it's pretty enjoyable. Let's let's definitely let's I I'll I'll give it a shot. Well, uh, thanks for everything you're doing for the music world. Yeah, man. You know, there's there's not a lot of like dedicated soldiers on the ground because we're all too floaty. <laughs> we're like like I'll wake up in the morning, I have a cup of coffee, I'm like I'm fighting for the music, you know, the, the people out there, and I write a message to Congress, and then like next hour I'm just like in some mat, like some land making music, and I forgot it. But you you stay constant, so thank you. We need all of it. All right, man. Well, uh, I'll see you back on Zoom at some point for a session. All right, brother. All right, homie. Bye. Love you. Bye. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching this update from the And the Writer Stays at Home series. Goes without saying, these are some crazy times that we're all facing, and there's a lot of uncertainty permeating the entire industry. So Joe and I wanted to make sure you guys stayed inspired and you guys felt connected and know that as we always do, we will get through this as a community. So if you have the means, please consider making a donation to the Music Cares Coronavirus Relief Fund at the link below. Even a little bit goes a long way for those who really need it. And if you need relief, it's very simple to apply. You can also find links to a number of additional resources in the description below. Thanks again for watching and please stay tuned for more And The Writer Stays At Home updates.